Hi guys, welcome back to Ladensa Crochets. My name is Liz and in this tutorial we're going to make this top. It's a very simple pattern. The only stitches that you'll need to use are the double crochet stitch, single crochet stitch and the chain stitch. The bell sleeves are what I love most about this top and I hope you're going to enjoy making them too. If you're not subscribed, kindly subscribe and let's get into the tutorial. I'll be using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook, some medium weight yarn, in color yellow i'll need a pair of scissors stitch markers measuring tape and a done need determine your bust measurements mine is 34 divide it by two and this will be 17. we are going to work two separate panels two panels we're going to have a back panel and a front panel and then we're going to attach the sleeve so we're going to begin with the back panel our starting chain is the length of the top, so we begin with a slip knot and chain 51. That's the length that I want to work. If you want a top that is longer, you can chain more. Fifty-one chains give me a length of about 14 without stretching. So if you want your top longer, make sure that you do more chains. And the number of chains that you do should be an odd number so i've done 51 and not 50. you can do 53 55 and so on next you're going to block off the last chain and chain one more then put your hook into that chain that you're holding and yarn over and grab a loop then you'll have two loops on your hook yarn over pull through the two that's a single crochet in the first stitch then chain one skip the next chain and work a single crochet into the third chain chain one again skip this one and into the fifth work a single crochet chain one again skip the next stitch and work into the one that follows so we're skipping this working into this one a single crochet chain one skip then work into this chain skip work into the next chain chain one then skip and continue working like this till you get to the end of the first row at the end of the first row your last stitch should be a single crochet if you did an odd number of chains you should end with a single crochet into the last stitch I've just done the last chain. I have two stitches remaining. So into the last stitch, I'll place my last single crochet there. We are done with row one. You're going to chain one and turn to begin row two. We begin row two into that last stitch that we've just done. And into it, we're going to work a single crochet. So you're just going to put your hook into that very first stitch. Grab a loop and pull through. Then do a single crochet. Chain one. Again, we skip the chain and into the previous single crochets, we place another single crochet. So every previous single crochet is going to get a single crochet and there's going to be a chain in between the single crochets. So chain and place a single crochet onto the previous single crochet. So as you can see, these stitches are very visible. This is a single crochet and this is a chain. So you're placing the single crochet into the previous single crochet right there. Then you're going to chain one. You're skipping this chain right here and working into the single crochet from the previous row. Chain one, skip this, work into the next one. So the, the stitches might look the same, so you're just skipping and then working a single crochet into the next stitch. Skip this, work into the next. Chain one, skip this, work here. Chain one, skip this, work into the next. Chain one, skip, single crochet next. Chain one, skip, single crochet, and repeat to the end.
so in the last stitch this is where you place your last single crochet i hope that's visible enough so right here put your hook through and complete a single crochet that's row two done next chain one and turn to begin row three we work row three the same way we've worked row two so beginning with the first stitch place a single crochet into that first stitch then chain one skip the next stitch work into the third which is the previous single crochet do a single crochet right there chain one skip this work into the next chain one skip the next one and work into the stitch that follows chain one skip next stitch chain skip work into the next chain skip and work into the next one so you will just keep repeating row two until you have a number of rows that will give you half of your bust when your work is slightly stretched so i'll go on work like 10 rows and then i'll come back and i'll show you how to stretch out your work in order to achieve half of your bust measurement because the back panel will be half of the bust measurement the front panel will also be another half Chain one, turn to begin row four and keep going. So this is after 14 rows. Your work should look like this. This is the length of the top. We are working the bust and we're measuring in this direction. So you're just going to get your tape measure, place it right there without stretching i'm at around four when i stretch this out you don't want to stretch it too much because when you do it creates very big gaps so you want to stretch it a little bit and when i do that i'll get to around 5.5 or 6 or there about so what i'll do is i'll keep going till i get to 17 then i'll come back and show you how many rows i'll have done to get to my 17 which is half of my bust now chain one and turn to begin the next row we're beginning in the first stitch as usual chain one skip work into the next I've done a total of 50 rows and this is what I have for the back panel. At the end, I chained one and cut off the yarn, leaving a tail that we're going to sew in. So this is what we have for the back panel. When we measure this without stretching um, at 13, I needed to get to 17 and so I'm just going to give this a bit of a stretch. Remember, we're not stretching out too much. And when I give it a little bit of a stretch, it will get me to 17 next we're going to do the front panel and to do the front panel we begin the same way we did with the back panel so i'll do the chain of 51 and do a total of 15 rows then I'll, I'll meet you once i have my first 15 rows of the front panel the number of rows will work for the front panel which should be equal to the number of rows for the 
back panel but we're working differently so for instance i got my 50 rows in the back panel so i'll take my 50 minus 20 and then i'm going to get 30 then i'll take 30 divided by 2 to give me 15. this 20 is standard for all sizes so if you've worked 40 rows you'll take 40 minus 20 to get 20 then you'll take this 20 that you've gotten here 20 and divide it by 2. so your first few rows will be 10 minus 15. if you've worked a total of say 60 rows to get to your half of your bust you're going to take 60 minus 20 and this will give you 40 then you're going to take this 40 divided by 2 to get 20 and your first few rows should be 20. so mine are 30 yours could be 10 they could be 20 they could be 12. so whatever number you've gotten the total number minus 20 divided by 2. i've worked my 15 rows and this is what i have because let's see this is the right side this is the right way to hold the top then we have the front panel right there so what we do is the 20 rows are going to be in between here so we're going to have the 16th row having less stitches than the other the other rows so what i do is i'll just chain, chain one at the end of the the 15th row here chain one and turn then i'll work row 16 till i have 10 stitches remaining on the other side so you can do count the stitches so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten so count the ten stitches and mark so i'll just place a marker right there to show that i'm going to work till i get to the stitch before the stitch marker for the 16th row yours could be the 11th or the 21st or the 17th depending on the number of rows that you did for the back panel so i'll just begin with a single crochet into the first stitch chain one single crochet after skipping on the previous single crochet chain one and repeat this pattern till you get to the stitch before the stitch marker and i'll meet you there um at the stitch before the stitch marker and that is where we end with row 16. now we chain one and turn to begin row 17 and from row 17 up to row 35 because it's 15 plus 20 i'll be working up to this point so i'll just go on work my next 20 rows i'm in the second row so that i get to a total of 35 rows just repeating the pattern this is a very simple pattern that should be easy to work so i'll meet you once i'm done with my 35 rows So this is after 20 rows that i'm uh, getting me to 35 and the remaining part will be 15 rows now if you end your work at this point you're going to need to work a row back to the top part because an addition of one row is no issue to your work so just make sure that you end at this point before you can chain 10. so from this point you're going to chain 10. Ten is a ten stitches that we reduced on this other side so that ten chains will get us back to the top part and now we're going to start working the next 15 rows you're going to hold the 10 stitch chain one more go into that stitch that you're holding and place a single crochet chain one skip the next chain and work into the third with a single crochet chain one skip single crochet into the next one chain one skip the next then single crochet into the next chain one and skip and you know the drill you're going to chain one skip do a single crochet to the end so at this point we are skipping this and working right here so at this point then chain one skip 
and continue now i'm in my first row of that extension part and i'm going to work 15 rows so i'll work till i get to row 50 because right now i'm in row 36 once i get to row 50 i'll be done with my front panel and i'll show you how to connect the two to get the top After the last 15 rows, which is what I have right here, I'm done with the front panel. And what I'll do is, I've already chained one, so I'll just cut off the end at that point. Then pull through and fasten. Next, we're going to attach the two panels together. So we'll attach on top and on this other side. Then we're going to leave out some space for the sleeves and then attach the bottom part and do the same on the other side. With a dani needle and a piece of yarn, we're going to attach the upper part and we're just going to stitch or sew the two corresponding sides together on the top part. So I'll just begin in the first row. We are working on the rows because these are rows. On this side is where we have the stitches. So I'll just put my yarn through get this tail that i had here and the one that i've just attached and i'll make a knot then make a second knot then as i attach the two ends together i'll work over the over the tails or over the ends So just one row with the corresponding row on the other side. And attach till you have 15 rows joined together. I feel like these tails at the ends are well hidden and I can cut them off. Then continue sewing to the last row. Once you join to that point, you're going to put a knot 
the end then just hide this tail inside the stitches Once you've done that, you can cut off the yarn and use the yarn that remains to attach on the other side. So one part of the shoulders is joined together. This is the wrong side and this right here is the right side. So I'll just begin on the other end and do the same thing I've done on this other side. That is join the corresponding rows together beginning the first and the first on the other end i'll get this tail with the one that i've just joined and make two knots so the first and the second then i'll just start working over those ends as i join the corresponding rows so now the second row with the second row on the other side And then join till you get to this point after joining the other side this is what we'll have the two panels are joined together like this now we need to join the sides and the sides the stitches are very visible we are going to leave out 25 stitches on each side on this side and on the other side for the sleeve part of the top so count 25 stitches from this point up to a point right here and on the other side then mark i'll do the counting and mark on both sides then i'll come back and i'll attach the corresponding stitches on each of the two sides so mark out the 25 25 is standard for everyone standard for all the sizes so i just marked out the sleeves right here and on the other side next i'll just get my yarn needle and attach these stitches from this point up to the stitch before the stitch marker so just get the yarn put your hook through the first stitch and the first stitch on the other side then i'll just make a knot with this tail that was there and make another one to secure it in place then i'll just start joining the corresponding stitches so that's the first stitch I'll go into that first stitch again I'll be working over the tails then we'll go into the next stitch on this side and the next stitch on the other side and attach then do that till you get to the stitch before the stitch mark So I'm in the last stitch of attachment and right there I'll do a knot then weave in that end that remains before cutting it off
after cutting off that yarn you're going to attach it on the other side and join i'll meet you once i've joined this part both sides are joined and we turn this top to the right side now so this is what we have and we're going to attach the bell sleeves to do the sleeve you're going to get your yarn and do a slip knot then you're going to get one point where you're supposed to attach and uh, at this corner at this part in the armpit you're going to reattach your yarn on one of the stitches that is at the corner and then slip stitch at that stitch then you're going to chain four one two three then that is our first double crochet the fourth is a chain one then you're going to skip the next stitch then yarn over and do a double crochet in the stitch that follows again you're going to chain one skip the stitch that follows go into the the next one with a double crochet chain one skip a stitch and work into the next one with a double crochet chain one skip double crochet chain one skip double crochet into the next one chain one skip the next stitch this is the next one so into the one that follows do a double crochet and you're going to repeat this till you get back to where you've started so i'll meet you once i have like a stitch remaining and explain how to complete row one of the sleeve part So at the end I have one stitch remaining in the mid group so I'm just going to chain one and then into the chain four stitch I'll st slip stitch into the third stitch into the third chain that is one two three into the third one to a slip stitch and we've completed row one of the sleeve you're going to chain four and turn to begin row two and we're going to work on the previous double crochets so yarn over into the next double crochet do a double crochet chain one double crochet on top of the previous double crochet chain one double crochet chain one and do a double crochet so we just work in double crochets separated by a chain and we're going to repeat this till we get to the end of row two At the end of row two chain one and slip stitch onto the third chain so one two and three that's the end of row two you're going to chain four and turn to begin row three 
we are going to work row three the same way we've worked row two and we'll repeat this row for a total of 20 rows so i'm in row three i'll work the next rows until i get to 20 rows then i'll come back and show you how to work differently from the 20th row so go on do your 20 rows and let's meet back here This right here is after the 20 rows and uh, now we're going to work row 21 and it's going to be different from the other rows and what we're going to do is we begin with the chain 4 and turn. We begin with the double crochet into the next double crochet right here and we count that as our first gap. We're going to chain 2 and do the second gap chain two do the third gap chain three do the fourth chain one and do the fifth sorry you're chaining one in between the double crochets so i have one two three four and five gaps now into this stitch that we've just worked we're going to work an increase and you're going to chain one yarn over and go into that same stitch and do a double crochet so that's our first increase then we're going to chain one then move on to the next double crochet and do the first gap chain two uh, chain one sorry to the next gap so that's one two three four and five so after the fifth we increase right there where we have the double crochet after the fifth gap so chain one go into the same stitch and do a double crochet again we're going to do five gaps so we have one two three four and five then increase at that point to a chain one and do a double crochet into the same stitch then we work again five gaps after the fifth we'll, we'll increase again so you have one two three four and five then chain one and increase into that stitch we continue to the end chain one work five more gaps there should be five remaining so one two three four chain one now the last one goes into this stitch the first stitch that we have and there's going to be an increase right there because we're going to have two double crochets originating from the same stitch then you're going to chain one and complete the row by slip stitching into the chain three of the first chain that we made so there that's our row 21 with an increase row 22 is a row with no increase so you're just going to chain four and turn then we're going to work a double crochet onto the previous double crochets each of the double crochet will get a double crochet and there's going to be a chain in between and we are not increasing so go all around just working a double crochet with a chain in between the double crochets and i'll meet you at the end of row 22. At the end you're going to slip stitch into the third chain so one two and three to complete row 22 so because row 22 there was no increase we increase in row 23 so we chain four and turn then the last increase we did five gaps this next one will be six gaps so we begin with the first one two 
three, four, five, and six gaps. So we increase into that gap, into this stitch. So chain one and double crochet into that same stitch. Then we repeat the pattern. Chain one, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So into that sixth, after the sixth gap, we increase by chaining one and work in a double crochet into that same stitch. Then repeat. So six gaps, then increase. So those are my six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then increase. Now next we're going to do the last six gaps. And we're going to have our last double crochet into this first stitch. slip stitch into the third chain to complete the row we are done with row 23 we're going to chain 4 and turn to begin row 24 row 24 does not have an increase so we're just going to place a double crochet on top of each of the previous double crochets and make sure that there's a chain in between the double crochets once you get to the end you're going to slip stitch and begin row 25 Row 25 is going to be an increased row. And because in row 23 we did 6 gaps, in row 25 we'll do 7. Then we'll increase again in row 27 where we'll do 8 gaps. So the gaps keep increasing by 1. So we started with 5, move to 6, then we'll move to 7, then to 8, to 9, to 10, and so on until you have the full length of the sleeve that you have. Make sure that when you increase in one row, the next row does not have an increase. If you count five gaps in one row of increase, the next row of increase will have six. The one that follows will have seven. The other one will have eight. So the gaps increase by one as we go up the increase rows. Keep alternating between the rows of increase and an increase until you get your full length of the sleeve. I'll meet you once I have mine and I'll let you know how many rows I'll have done to achieve that length. Once you're done with this sleeve, you can go ahead and attach the sleeve on the other side the same same way. And if you're okay with the length of your top, you'll be done once the two sleeves are done. Uh, my top, I've realized that it's a bit short, so I'll do a bit of an edging to make it a bit longer so that it's not too cropped. So once I'm done with my two sleeves, I'll come back and show you how to do the edging. However, if you do not want your to lengthen your top, you can leave it at the point where you'll have done the sleeves. See you once I'm done with the sleeves. 
Uh, this is my sleeve after 36 rows and I've achieved the desired length. And so what I'm going to do is do the final, the final row, which is a single crochet row. So I'm going to chain one and turn. You want to ensure that you're working this row from the outside part of the sleeve. So just begin in the first stitch with a single crochet, put your hook through, grab a loop, grab a loop and pull through all the two loops. Then you're going to work a single crochet in the chain, chain one gap. A single crochet on top of the next double crochet single crochet into the chain one gap single crochet on top of the double crochet in the chain one gap and the double crochet so we're just going to work single crochets into each of the stitches that is both the double crochet stitch and the chain one stitch and repeat till you come to the end of that row once you get to that end you'll be done with the sleeve My last stitch is in the chain one gap. Then slip stitch on top of the first single crochet, do a slip stitch. Then chain one and at that point you will cut off the yarn. I'd already cut off mine so I'll just pull through and fasten. And that sleeve is done. Now I'll go on, attach the other sleeve on the other side then I'll come back once I have the two sleeves. At this point my two sleeves are in place as you can see so there are the sleeves and like i mentioned earlier i'll be doing a ribbon or an edging at the bottom part and i mentioned that if you're okay with your top the way it is you don't really have to do the edging you can leave it like that now for the ribbon i'll go for a smaller hook i've been using a 4.5 and i'll be using a three millimeter crochet actually it's a 2.5 i'll be using the 2.5 for the ribbon i'll just get my yarn i'll work the ribbon then attach it to the top now for the ribbon you're going to use your waist measurements and you'll begin with a slip knot. Then chain 12. Then block off the 12th stitch and chain one more. Chain one more, then go into that stitch that you're holding, put your hook through, grab a loop, uh, 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 yarn over, and grab a loop to have two loops and complete a single crochet. So, row one will be a single crochet into each of the chains for a total of 12 single crochets. So those are my 12 single crochets in the first row then i'll chain one and turn to begin row two we're going to work row two in the back loop because we want something that is ribbed and that means instead of working into this stitch right here we'll work in those, this loop at the back so in the first stitch in the back loop right here put your hook through yarn over and grab a loop and complete a single crochet into that back loop 
then you're going to go into the next back loop yarn over and grab a loop yarn over complete a single crochet then do the next stitch in the back loop do a single crochet into the next back loop a single crochet and into all the back loops till you get your 12 single crochets This is the last single crochet into that back loop we do the last single crochet chain one and turn to begin row three again we work row three the same way we've worked row two so we're working in the back loop right there do a single crochet then a single crochet into the next back loop and a single crochet into all the back loops till you get to the end and we'll keep repeating this row Till you get a ribbon that is the length of your waist minus 10. So mine is dirty. I'll do a ribbon that is that has a length of 20 inches when not stretched. If you want to stretch out your work, then you're going to ensure that when it is stretched, it fits to your waist. So just keep going with the rows of single crochets in the back loops. And I'll be back once I have my ribbon ready. To be attached to the top I've done a total of 90 rows and this is, will be able to fit on my waist. When I'm measuring this, I fold it into two. Like this. Then get the measuring tape and measure. As you can see, mine goes up to 10 and because it's folded into two, 10 times two is 20. 20 plus 10 will get me to 30. So my ribbon is ready to be attached to the top so now we attach the two ends together before attaching it i've already chained one all right let's do this at the end of that last row chain one and turn then get your two ends together and we're going to attach in the back loop of this side and both loops on the other side we attach with a slip stitch then the second stitch in the back loop the other side on both loops do a slip stitch the third and the third on the other side so just attach the corresponding um stitches with a slip stitch In the last stitch I'll attach on both loops like that then you're going to chain one and you're going to leave a long tail that you'll use for sewing this to the top so I'll just cut off my yarn leaving a long tail for sewing the ribbon then I'll pull through and fasten this is the wrong side so I'll turn it to the right side like this my top is turned to the right side so I'll just bring it here and get my stitch markers then i'll mark points of connection use as many stitch markers as possible so i'll get the first stitch marker 
and I'll mark this point where I've just joined. Then I'll get one end of the top on this side, one side of the top and attach like that with the marker. Then I'm going to get this other end and this end and attach them together. So this end of the ribbon. And the end of the top joined together. Like that. Then you might need to stretch out the ribbon. But instead you can do this. Holding it such that these two stitch markers are aligned. Hold your top like this. You, you want to make sure that these two stitch markers are well aligned. They are at the same place like this. Then you're going to get a stitch marker. Mark this end. And attach it with this other end of the top. Do the same thing on the other side. So this is what we have now. You can get another stitch marker and mark the middle the point between this stitch marker and this other one just get a point you can do that while stretching your ribbon you can get another one and mark sorry Then you're going to get You'll need to work from the inside. So I'll just turn my top like this. And I'll start attaching to this side with this other side. You just need to attach proportionately such that your top and the ribbon fit each other. You know the ribbon is shorter than the the top itself so you want to make sure that you align it well so that they fit together perfectly so this is how i saw and i ensure that i go into every row on the ribbon but on the part of the top i can skip some rows just to ensure that the the two are well aligned so just saw the way i am doing it and you're going to do this all the way around till your ribbon is well attached. Once you get to the stitch marker, you don't need it anymore, so you just pull it out. 
and keep attaching to the next stitch marker then go all the way around i'll meet you once my ribbon is attached At this point i'm done attaching and i'll just do a knot then weave in the tail that has remained and weave in all the other tails and after that i'll be completely done this is how the top will look like after the ribbon and we are done did you watch the tutorial to the end thank you so much but are you subscribed uh subscribe hit the notification bell and please leave a like comment and even share if you've enjoyed the tutorial and see you in the next one